Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to all rise for the arrival of the Administrator of the Government of Alberta. but I'm going to ask you to be seated, some of you to be seated. <laughs> Chief Justice, Premier-designate, the new Democratic Party members-elect, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Catherine Housing. I am the Chief of Protocol for the Government of Alberta, and I would like to welcome you to this afternoon's swearing-in of Alberta's 17th Premier and her Cabinet. For centuries, this site has been a gathering place for Aboriginal people. Today we gather in Treaty 6 territory as a community to witness a moment in the history of our province. With this in mind, Premier-designate requested the involvement of the First Nations and Métis communities. I would, <laughs> I would now invite Mr. John McDonald, Métis elder and veteran, to bring the blessing. Good afternoon, Your Honour, Madam Notley, ladies and gentlemen of the new Cabinet, elders, veterans, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honour and a pleasure to be invited to take part in this afternoon's swearing-in ceremony and celebrations. My name is John McDonald, a retired member of the Canadian Armed Forces, 38 years service, and I'm proud to be a Métis. Please join me in a prayer for Madam Notley, the new 17th Premier of Alberta and her cabinet members. Please stand and pray in your own way and in your own language. 
Our Father, bless us this day, for your breath is life, and bless us here today. Give us again to see sunrise and sunset. Let us put our minds together and see what life we can make for our children. In the presence of the Great Spirit, we give thanks for the gift of wisdom, guidance, and leadership. May we be like the eagle who flies high and sees far. We give thanks for wisdom, understanding, and gifts of intellect. May we be like the buffalo and be strong. In the presence of the Great Spirit, we wish to reflect the warmth of Father, Son, and Mother Earth, as there is great mysteries for you to ponder throughout this day and in days to come. May you carry in your heart a sense of adventure, vision of hope, and a courageous dream as we you embark on your new journey. May the gods create, join together in celebration. May the spirits dance. May dreams come true, for on this day we honor you. The challenge of life we welcome and embrace. O great spirit, keep us, the people of Alberta, in good health, mentally and physically, to solve our problems and to accomplish something for our generations. Guide us to our homes safely and protect the many men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces, wherever they may serve, and bring them back safely. Lord, bless us this day, for history is in the making. Amen. Hi, hi. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Uh, you, you, you may be seated. You may... Um, thank you, Mr. McDonald. I would now ask Mr. Rocky Morin from the Enoch Cree Nation to perform an honor song. Ahauntu Timtik, Kitamskatinoel, Gahkyo, Uta Husky, Treaty Six. Tapwe Mia Gisago, a nuts, Kagisaga. Hi, hi, Ish Nish, Adewaka. I want to render a, a special honoring song for our new Premier and her cabinet as we honor the commitment to working with all Aboriginal peoples throughout this great province of Alberta. So please join me in celebration and in honor today. Thank you. much, Mr. Morin. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite the Administrator of the Government of Alberta, Chief Justice of Alberta, the Honourable Catherine Fraser, to the podium. Chief Justice. Good afternoon, Premier-designate.
cabinet minister designates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. On this glorious spring day, it is my distinct pleasure to take part in this ceremony in my role as administrator for the province and on behalf of his honor, Colonel retired, the Honorable Donald S. Ethel. Throughout his tenure as vice regal representative, Lieutenant Governor Ethel has offered a remarkable model of service before self, fulfilling his duties compassion, strength of purpose, and an unwavering commitment to the values and beliefs upon which our nation stands. Lieutenant Governor Ethel would have loved to have provided over this ceremony. However, back injuries are limiting his mobility. His honor has me to extend best wishes to Motley and her cabinet, and I am sure that they along with all Albertans, join me in offering sincere thanks and congratulations to our Lieutenant Governor for his faithful service as he nears the completion of his tenure. The ceremony we are witnessing today is an important milestone in the life and history of our province. It's rooted in the fundamental principles of our Canadian system of government. It's a celebration of the values that underpin our constitutional democracy. This includes the right and responsibility we hold as Canadians to participate in the free election of the leaders entrusted to safeguard our democratic traditions and guide our future. It is fitting that we mark this moment on the steps of the Alberta Legislature a place that embodies our system of responsible government, a place that honors the importance of free and open speech, a place that belongs to the citizens that members of the assembly are sworn to represent, and first and foremost, a place that symbolizes our commitment to the rule of law. In the end, it is our collective commitment to the rule of law and equality that allows men and women to reach our full potential, become what we want to be and not what someone else thinks we should be, and leave a legacy of peace, and leave a legacy of peace, prosperity, and progress for those who follow. I would like to welcome Premier Notley and Ministers of the Crown to their new roles. The oaths that you take today reflect our heritage as a nation as well as our parliamentary customs and traditions. They represent the profound challenges and opportunities that come with serving the greater good and they are an expression of the confidence your fellow citizens have placed in you to lead our great province. I know that you will undertake your duties with courage, integrity, and honor, and with a steadfast commitment to delivering fair, well-reasoned, ethical, and effective government. to Premier Rachel Notley. You were raised in a family that understood the honor, privilege, and sacrifices that come with service. There are many fine examples to help guide you 
in the tremendous responsibilities that lie ahead, including your mother, the late Sandra Notley, who taught you and your siblings the value of community service, and your father, the late Grant Notley, who deeply appreciated the importance of public service and the invaluable work that takes place in this building. I am confident that you will bring to bear the very best of your heritage, education, and experience to your work as Premier of Alberta, that you will embrace every opportunity to foster the highest quality of life for all Albertans, and that you will commit the best of your energy and intentions to the work of keeping our province safe secure, stable, and strong. Thank you, God bless Alberta, and God save the Queen. And now, on behalf of His Honour, the Lieutenant Governor, I accept the resignation of the Honourable Jim Prentice and his government today. The Lieutenant Governor has asked Miss Rachel Notley to form a government, and today, on his honour's behalf, I will preside. Miss Notley, would you please step forward? Are you prepared to form the government, Miss Notley? I solemnly affirm. Yes. I will now administer the oath of the Executive Council. Please repeat, I solemnly affirm at the close of the oath. You, Rachel Notley, do solemnly promise and swear that you will serve Her Majesty truly and faithfully in the place of her council in this Her Majesty's province of Alberta. You will keep close and secret all such matters as shall be treated, debated, and resolved on in executive council without publishing or disclosing the same or any part thereof by word, writing, or any otherwise to any person out of the same council, but to such only as be of the council. And yet, if any matter so propounded, treated, and debated in any such executive council shall touch upon any particular person sworn of the same council, upon any such matter as shall in any wise concern his loyalty and fidelity to the Queen's Majesty, you will in no wise open the same to him, but keep it secret, as you would from any person, until the Queen's Majesty's pleasure be known in that behalf. You will in all things to be moved, treated, and debated in any such executive council, faithfully, honestly, and truly declare your mind and opinion to the honour and benefit of the Queen's Majesty and the good of her subjects, without partiality or exception of persons, in no wise forbearing so to do from any manner of respect, favour, love, me, displeasure, or dread of any person or persons whatsoever. In general, you will be vigilant, diligent, and circumspect in all your doings touching the Queen's Majesty's affairs, all which matters and things you will faithfully observe and keep, as a good counsellor ought to do, to the utmost of your power, will, and discretion. Do you so affirm? I solemnly affirm. Please subscribe to the oath by signing the Executive Council Roll Book.
Before you do that, please take the oath as President of the Executive Council and Minister of International and Intergovernmental Relations and subscribe to the same in the Executive Council roll book. I, I, Rachel Notley, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as President of Executive Council and Minister of International and Intergovernmental Relations in the province of Alberta. Okay, this isn't in the script, but you can congratulate her. She is now officially Premier. I accept the Premier's recommendations. Premier, please now introduce to our guests the members of Executive Council. Keep it with me in case. Yeah. And I'm going to take that. Mm -hmm. Chief Justice, I would now ask the members to rise and take the oath of the Executive Council. Brian Mason, David Egan, Darren Billis, Joe Cece, Margaret McQuaig Boyd, Sarah Hoffman, <laughs> Kathleen Ganley, Laurie Sigurdsson, O'Neill Collier, Shannon Phillips, and Irfan Sabir. Chief Justice, I would ask you to administer the oath of Executive Council to these individuals. Members, please repeat, so help me God, or I solemnly affirm at the close of the oath according to your choosing. You, Brian Mason, David Egan, Darren Billis, Joe Cece, Margaret McQuaig Boyd, Sarah Hoffman, Kathleen Ganley, Laurie Sigurdsson, O'Neill Collier, Shannon Phillips, and Irfan Saber, do solemnly promise and swear that you will serve Her Majesty truly and faithfully in the place of her council in this Her Majesty's province of Alberta. You will keep close and secret all such matters as shall be treated, debated, and resolved on in executive council without publishing or disclosing the same or any part thereof by word, writing, 
or any otherwise to any person out of the same council, but to such only as be of the council. And yet if any matter so propounded, treated, and debated in any such executive council shall touch any particular person sworn of the same council upon any such matter as shall in any wise concern his loyalty and fidelity to the Queen's Majesty, you will in no wise open the same to him, but keep it secret, as you would from any person, until the Queen's Majesty's pleasure be known in that behalf. You will in all things to be moved, treated, and debated in any such executive council faithfully, honestly, and truly declare your mind and opinion to the honor and benefit of the Queen's Majesty and the good of her subjects without partiality or exception of persons, in no wise forbearing so to do from any manner of respect, favor, love, meed, displeasure, or dread of any person or persons whatsoever. In general, you will be vigilant, diligent, and circumspect in all your doings touching the Queen's Majesty's affairs, all of which matters and things you will faithfully observe and keep as a good counselor ought to do to the utmost of your power, will, and discretion. Members will now subscribe to the oath by signing the Executive Council Roll Book. Please be seated. Right here? Yes. So, Chief Justice, I will now call forward Brian Mason to take the oath as Minister of Infrastructure and Minister of Transportation.
I, Brian Mason, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Infrastructure and Minister of Transportation for the province of Alberta. I solemnly affirm. David Egan, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Education and Minister of Culture and Tourism. Well, thank you. I, David Egan, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Education and Minister of Culture in Tourism for the province of Alberta. I do solemnly affirm. Darren Billis, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Municipal Affairs and Minister of Service, Alberta. I, Darren Billis, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Municipal Affairs and Minister of Service Alberta for the province of Alberta, so help me God. Joe Sisi, please step forward to take the oath as President of Treasury Board and Minister of Finance. Please take the oath of office and subscribe to same in the Executive Council roll book. Thank you. I, Joe Sisi, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me as President of Treasury Board and Minister of Finance for the province of Alberta. I solemnly affirm. Margaret McQuaid Boyd, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Energy. Please take the oath of office and subscribe to the same in the Executive Council roll book. 
I, Margaret McQuaig Boyd, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Energy for the province of Alberta, so help me God. Sarah Hoffman, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Health and Minister of Seniors. Please take the oath of office and subscribe to the same in the Executive Council roll book. I, Sarah Hoffman, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed to me as Minister of Health and Minister of Seniors for the province of Alberta. I so affirm. Kathleen Ganley, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Justice and Solicitor General and Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. Please take the oath of office and subscribe to the same in the Executive Council roll book. Thank you. I, Kathleen Ganley, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Justice and Solicitor General and Minister of Aboriginal Relations for the province of Alberta. I solemnly affirm. Lori Sigurdsson, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Innovation and Advanced Education and Minister of Jobs, Skills Training and Labour. Please take the oath of office and subscribe to the same in the Executive Council roll book. Thank you. I, Lori Sigurdsson, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Innovation and Advanced Education and Minister of Jobs, Skills, Training and Labour for the province of Alberta, I solemnly affirm. O'Neill Collier, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Agriculture and Forestry.
please take the oath of office and subscribe to the same in the Executive Council Roll Book. I, O'Neill Collier, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Agriculture and Forestry for the province of Alberta, so help me God. Shannon Phillips, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Environment and Parks and Minister Responsible for the Status of Women. Please, please I, take Phillips, the oath of office. Do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Environment and Parks and Minister Responsible for the Status of Women for the Province of Alberta. I solemnly affirm. I had to have one person shorter than me. <laughs> Irfan Sabir, please step forward to take the oath as Minister of Human Services. Please take the oath of office and subscribe to the same in the Executive Council roll book. Thank you. I, Irfan Sabir, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skills and knowledge execute the power and trust reposed in me as Minister of Human Services for the province of Alberta, I solemnly affirm. Chief Justice, these are the members of the Executive Council. The Chief Justice will now entrust the Great Seal of Alberta to the Provincial Secretary. I entrust you with the Great Seal of Alberta for safekeeping. This is it. <laughs> I accept Chief Justice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would now invite the Honourable Rachel Notley, Premier of the Province of Alberta, to bring remarks.
So, um, so after all that, the speeches are now just getting started. <laughs> Chief Justice, distinguished guests, valued colleagues, and Albertans from across our great province, welcome to your Legislative Assembly. Welcome to the first day of Alberta's new government. As I stand here on the steps of your legislature, the front doors of which are open today, I look out and I see the faces of today's Alberta, the faces of our growing and welcoming province, of the families that make our communities strong and diverse, the faces of our province's future and our amazing potential. Today, we open a new chapter in the story of Alberta. Now, from our earliest days, Albertans have worked as hard as anyone to forge a brighter future. People from all walks of life, from every part of the world, join together on a common journey. And on that journey, we've been guided by enduring values. Albertans are hardworking, we are entrepreneurial, and we are relentlessly optimistic. We believe that tomorrow can be a better day and that we must work hard to make it happen. That's who we are as Albertans. And through grit and determination, we've accomplished great things. We've built cities that families and businesses are choosing to call home. We've built universities and colleges that attract the brightest minds and help our students reach their fullest potential. We've built farms and rural communities that weather the toughest storms to support all of our families. And we've built new industries and made fresh discoveries that are powering a brighter future for our province. And together, we are creating new opportunities for each other and for people from around the world. That's the spirit of Alberta that moves us forward. It drives us to succeed. It's the spirit that allows Albertans to reach higher and to reach out to each other. <laughs> Ultimately, our optimism is rooted in the strength and the resilience of our communities, as you can kind of see from today. <laughs> We care about each other, and we stand up for one another, especially when it matters most. Something like 40 below weather will teach you that, and sometimes 30 plus weather as well. Those are the values that have built our province, and they will guide our government too. So today, as I stand with, here with you, I'm thinking of every Albertan who works to build our province. I'm thinking of the shift workers, of the farmers and the ranchers, of the roughnecks who are working to raise our families, of the business people and the job creators who invest their hearts and their savings to create something of their own. I'm thinking of the teachers who inspire our children and the healthcare professionals who provide the best care for all of us in our most vulnerable moments. And I'm thinking I'm thinking of every Albertan who gives something of themselves to build our strong communities. Because of all of you, Alberta is the province it's become, the province that we all love. And it's because of your work and your optimism that Alberta has a bright future. Today, I am filled with a deep sense of confidence in what that future will bring. I'm humbled, truly humbled, by your trust by the job at hand, and by our amazing potential. Now it's true, we are living in challenging times. The collapse in oil prices reaches into every community in the province. And too many Albertans are staying awake at night, worried about where their next paycheck will come from. Too many families are struggling to pay their bills at the end of the month. And too many Albertans, far too many children, continue to live in poverty. I know, and you know, our province can do better. <laughs> 
For all of us to share in the promise of our prosperity, we must do better. And that's why Albertans have chosen a new government. <laughs> Albertans, Albertans have chosen a stable majority government that will put the right priorities first. A government that shares the very same values that built our province and our prosperity. And today, we take another step forward to deliver on that promise. Albertans have elected a remarkable team of women and men to serve our province. The new members of your Legislative Assembly embody hope and optimism. And they bring rich and diverse experiences of Alberta life to this building. Your new MLAs include accomplished leaders in our communities, in business and in public life. They are social workers and nurses, teachers and doctors, community activists and students. Young and older, gay and straight, and more women than ever before. And this team will work every day to listen to Albertans, to earn public trust, and to deliver on our commitments. From this talented team, I've selected our new cabinet, 11 dedicated and determined women and men who will focus firmly on solving the challenges ahead. For the first time in many years, we have an efficient and lean cabinet to get down to work and to deliver results. This This is a cabinet that is built to work and to get the job done. To partner with Alberta's job creators in energy, forestry, agriculture, high-tech tourism and small business to grow and diversify our economy. To give our children the best chance to succeed and the right start in school. To protect and strengthen our public health care so it is there for our families when we need it. and to ultimately to restore trust and integrity in government, a government that belongs to Albertans. In the coming days, the Legislature will meet to make our first steps and begin the important work that Albertans have asked us to do. We will reach out across the aisle to our friends and colleagues in the opposition to serve the best interests of our province. And every step of the way, our strong and stable government will listen to Albertans. Because we work for you, we work for all of you. And we will, and we will act. We will act to deliver on the task you have given us, to help build a more prosperous, a more caring, and a more hopeful province for every Albertan. Albertans know that our province is stronger when every Albertan shares in our prosperity. And we know that we are healthier when we protect our fresh air and clean water. And we know that our future is brighter when First Nations can control their destiny and can trust a true partner in government to build a new relationship of respect. We know that the fabric of every community is tighter when we welcome new Albertans with open arms. And we also know that we can all reach a little higher when we ensure that every child can reach their life's full potential. So on this, on this historic day, we are once again joining together in pursuit of our common dream, the same dream that has inspired generations of Albertans, a dream founded on the idea that change is possible and that a better future awaits. My friends, it is springtime in Alberta, and a fresh wind is blowing. <laughs> to harness its potential, the hard work begins today. Thank you all so much for coming today. I am absolutely flabbergasted at this turnout. I'm, I'm just honoured, I have to tell you. Thank you all so much for coming.
Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to remain standing for the departure of the Administrator of the Government of Alberta. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We invite you to enjoy the music of 100 Mile House. Ice cream is being handed out along the waiting pools. But I've been informed that our Premier, her ministers and her colleagues wish to make their way out to meet those in attendance today. I would ask, I would ask the Honourable Rachel Notley, Premier of the Province of Alberta, to lead her colleagues down the stairs. Premier.